Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today is Friday, February 1st, 2019. Today I'll go over college hoops, NBA, and NHL scores, look ahead to tonight's game. But we have to start with what was the most surprising trade I can remember in a very long time. The New York Knicks trade, Kristaps Porzingis, and attached the onerous contracts of Tim Hardaway Jr. and... Courtney Lee, Trey Burke's also thrown in the deal to the Dallas Mavericks for Dennis Smith Jr., the expiring contracts of DeAndre Jordan and Wesley Matthews, and two future first-round picks, 2021 unprotected and 2023 top 10 protected. And if the 2023 one doesn't convert right away, turns into 2024 and then 2025 and so forth. All I can say is, wow. I thought Porzingis was going to be a superstar. He was on his way to becoming one. He has the ceiling of an all-NBA player. I think the only way this trade is going to work for the Knicks is if A, Dennis Smith Jr. becomes a superstar. B, The two max slots they cleared out by dumping Hardaway and Lee turn into Durant and Kyrie or any combination of Durant and Kyrie or Durant and Kawhi or Clay and Durant. It has to be Durant and somebody because if it's Kawhi and Kyrie, like, I'm sorry, Kevin Durant's your main target. It's a failure if you don't get him if you're in New York now. Or they could trade for Anthony Davis after they figure out with their lottery picks going to land, or they could throw in the lottery pick, a couple of those Dallas picks, Kevin Knox, Frank Nilakina, or even Smith Jr. to flip for Davis. So there's that intriguing thing in play, too. But let's flip this to Dallas for a second. I think this is a major win for Mark Cuban and Rick Carlisle because, yes, Porzingis has the bad injury history, but that guy's a special player, and pairing him with Luka Doncic would be a joy to watch for years, and that is a foundation that free agents are going to say, oh, I want to play with Dallas. But they don't have the cap room anymore because they have those two bad contracts with Lee and Hardaway. They're not going to have their pick this year in all likelihood because they traded it in the Atlanta deal with to get Doncic. And then that was the other pick that ended up being Trey Young, but that's a win for Dallas anyway. They got Doncic. But all the credit in the world of Mark Cuban and Donnie Nelson for making this trade happen. And back to the Knicks side for a minute. They met with Porzingis yesterday, and I talked about this on the podcast and how the meeting did not go well, and Porzingis was apparently not happy with the franchise's direction. But I wonder if that's what came out from Porzingis aside, but I was curious. I think he demanded a trade, but they didn't want to put it out that way because Anthony Davis got fined for demanding a trade, and they didn't want to be fined. So I kind of get why... He put it out the way he did. But this is just a shocker. But I'd give Dallas an A-plus in this deal. Yes, Porzingis has a sketchy history of injuries, but he's a very special player. He can protect the rim. He can shoot threes. He could be better at rebounding, and he could be a better passer. But I think playing alongside Luka Doncic, he'll improve in those areas. And from a Knicks side, I have to be honest, I have to give it an incomplete. Because it's either going to be an A or an F, depending on Duran or not. So, if it's if they land Durant in that cap space, it's an A or an A+. Plus. If they don't get Durant, it's an F. So right now, it's an incomplete for the Knicks. So we'll see what ends up happening 
in the aftermath of this deal with other teams and how this affects the Anthony Davis sweepstakes. But there is for sure a lot of intrigue there. LeBron James returned last night. I don't know if anybody heard about that. That Porzingis trade was so shocking that the underplayed story in the NBA last night was the return of LeBron James. And that was a perfect timing for his return. The Lakers go out and win against the Clippers. He was great. He looked like himself again. The Lakers have to be so happy. The game where he returns, they get the biggest win of their season against their rival that shares they share a building with. And the rival have to be ahead of them in the standings. Now they get one game closer to them in the standings. The Clippers are a team that I think are heading in the wrong direction. They should make a trade. They're a team that was in play about Porzingis. Back to Porzingis for a minute. The teams that were rumored to go after him because of this Mavericks thing that came out of nowhere. Woj originally said Brooklyn, San Antonio, Miami, the Clippers, and the Raptors were interested. And in Dallas is the team that pulls the trigger. But back to LeBron. This was kind of a surprise. The rumor was that he was going to come back on their East Coast trip. But he ends up coming back tonight. And now the Lakers are poised to make a run and shoot up the Western Conference standings. And while we're talking about the NBA, we're actually going to start there and go over their scores first. The Pistons defeat the Mavericks 93-89. to Not surprised about that one. Dallas was excited about Porzingis, and Luka Doncic didn't play. The Magic defeat the Pacers 107-100. Pacers 0-4 without all depot. Bucks defeat the Raptors 105-92. Fantastic win for Milwaukee. The Spurs defeat the Nets 117-114. Brooklyn, yet again, in a game where they don't quit. In the 76ers defeat the Warriors 113-104. Fantastic win for Philly. And I was talking about it before. The Lakers defeat the Clippers 123-120 in overtime. Only have five games late tonight, 7.30 on ESPN. You have the Celtics at the Knicks. Boston's favored by a whopping 13 and a half. Boston's going to win and cover. The Knicks are going to be distracted after the front office trades its best player who hasn't seen the court in a year. 7 o'clock, the Grizzlies at the Hornets. 8 o'clock, the Thunder at the Heat. 9 o'clock, the Hawks at the Jazz. And at 10 o'clock on ESPN, the Rockets at the Nuggets. Denver's favored by 4.5. You know what? I'm going to take a risk here and go with the Rockets to pull off the outright upset on the road. This Denver team's very good. But James Harden is on an incredible run, and they're due for a good performance on national TV. So give me the Rockets. To pull off the outright upset on the road. College hoops. I'm just going to go through the results. Fairleigh Dickinson defeats LAU Brooklyn 88-77. to I'm sorry, 80-77. to Number 13, Houston defeats Temple 73-66. Number 17, Purdue defeats Penn State 99-90 in overtime. I, I was right about that being a trap game. Rice defeats Charlotte 65-61. Furman defeats the Citadel 71-61. Central Connecticut State defeats St. Francis Brooklyn, 78-72. St. Francis Pennsylvania defeats Robert Barnes, 76-73. Ryder defeats St. Peter's, 59-51. Coastal Carolina defeats UL Monroe, 92-81. Charleston defeats James Madison, 70-53. Manhattan defeats Fairfield, 62-49. Old Dominion defeats North Texas, 72-61. Sacred Heart defeats Mount St. Mary's, 87-79. William & Mary defeats Drexel, 75-69. Wofford defeats Mercer, 76-67. Towson defeats UNC Wilmington, 77-76. Monmouth defeats Siena, 66-55. Southern Miss defeats FIU, 83-79. I'm sorry, 89-73. Maris defeats Iona, 78-74. Detroit defeats Cleveland State, 78-64. Appalachian State defeats Louisiana, 104-77. FAU defeats Louisiana Tech, 69-61. East Carolina defeats Tulane, 66-65. UNC Greensboro defeats VMI, 93-66. Austin P defeats Tennessee Tech, 77-66. Youngstown State defeats Oakland, 75-74. Bryant defeats Wagner, 71-64. Alon defeats Delaware, 57-56. Marshall defeats UTEP, 91-86. East Tennessee State defeats Stanford, or I'm sorry, Samford, 
74-66. Western Kentucky defeats UTSA 96-88 in overtime. Georgetown defeats Xavier 80-73. South Dakota State defeats Oral Roberts 86-80. SIU Edwardsville defeats Morehead State 83-76. Texas Rio Grande defeats Chicago State 77-46. Belmont defeats Southeast Missouri State 97-71. Western Carolina defeats Chattanooga 105-96. Jacksonville State defeats Murray State 88-68. Eastern Illinois defeats Eastern Kentucky 67-66. Tennessee State defeats Tennessee Martin 68-67. UCF defeats UConn 73-67. Oregon State defeats Colorado 76-74. Arizona State defeats Arizona 95-88 in overtime. Oregon defeats Utah 78-72. New Mexico State defeats UMKC 70-54. Sacramento State defeats Idaho State 74-58. Portland State defeats Weber State 76-75. Cal Poly defeats UC Riverside 71-45. Pepperdine defeats Portland 83-58. Loyal Marymount defeats Pacific 60-42. Number 4 Gonzaga defeats BYU 93-63. UC Irvine defeats Santa Barbara 66-62 in overtime. And Hawaii defeats Long Beach State 74-57. Kent State and Western Michigan, along with North Dakota, Western Illinois, were postponed due to weather concerns. Not a big slate tonight. 5 o'clock on ESPNU, you have Penn at Cornell. Penn's favorite by 5.5. I think they win in cover. 5.30, North Dakota, Western Illinois, the game that was postponed from yesterday. 7 o'clock, Fox Sports 1. Number 5, Michigan at Iowa. Michigan's favored by 3.5. I learned my lesson from last week that don't pick against Michigan or Michigan State until it's okay to do so. And I'm disappointed in Iowa and Indiana for no showing their games. Well, Iowa was more of a competitive game than the Indiana last week in terms of Fox Sports 1 games. So give me Michigan to win on the road but barely to cover. 7 o'clock ESPNU, Yale at Harvard. Harvard's favored by one. I think Yale's going to win. They're the better team. Kanipiak at Canisius. Davidson and St. Bonaventure on ESPN2. Davidson's a point and a half favorite. I think Davidson is going to win and cover. Princeton at Columbia. Northern Kentucky at IUPUI. Brown at Dartmouth. Number 18, Buffalo at Bowling Green on CBS Sports Network. Buffalo's favored by seven and a half. I think they win and cover. Milwaukee at Green Bay, 9 o'clock, Fox Sports 1. Number 21, Maryland, and number 24, Wisconsin. Wisconsin's fair by 4.5. I think they're going to win and cover. I like how Ethan Happ has played of late, and I like how the Badgers have played of late. And on ESPNU, you have Wright State at UIC. Wright State's favored by 2, and I think they win and they cover. NHL. The Rangers defeat the Devils 4-3. The Flyers defeat the Bruins 3-2 in overtime, and the Jets defeat the Blue Jackets 4-3. Tonight's slate, you have eight games. The Blackhawks at the Sabres at 7 o'clock, along with the Predators at the Panthers, the Lightning at the Islanders, Senators, Penguins, Flames, Capitals, 7.30, the Maple Leafs at the Red Wings, Gold Knights at the Hurricanes, and at 8 o'clock, the Wild at the Stars. I want to talk about something on my podcast that I forgot to mention yesterday. It was a trending topic in social media yesterday. Pierre Maguire said something that people thought was sexist in the broadcast of Penguins Lightning the other day when Kendall Coyne broadcasted with them. Pierre says, Tampa's going to be on your left, Pittsburgh's going to be on your right. What are you expecting out of this game? We're paying you to be an analyst, not a fan tonight. And then... I really think McGuire didn't mean what he said. And then he came out with a statement. And he said he felt bad that he said that. And then Kendall Coyne came out with a statement. And she didn't look at it as inappropriate at first until after she got a lot of text messages, apparently. And then 
she came out with that statement and my takeaway is that I think people are making too big of a deal of this and people are overreacting a little bit because she's a girl and he's a grown man. But hey, Pierre has a family and I know he didn't mean it that way and even he said it in his statement. Now my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. I whiffed last night because I threw the Warriors in there and they lost outright. I'm wagering a dollar forty five on this. We are going to go in the NBA. We're going to take the Boston Celtics. No way they lose. The Utah Jazz. There's nothing great really in college, but we'll go with Buffalo and we'll go with Green Bay. I don't like throwing NHL games in this, but we're going to have to today. We'll throw in the Pittsburgh Penguins against Ottawa. And then that is a five-team where I'm going to wager $1.45 to win $2.68 with the payout of $4.13. That's it for the podcast today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything from college basketball to NBA to NHL and anything else that happens in the world of sports. Hope you guys have a great day, everybody.